Have we already entered a recession? Worse, have we been in recession for years now? Recently, I joined Jeff Tucker of the Brownstone Institute on an article about the Herculean task trying to figure out what's actually happening in the economy, which is a challenge given every official number is broken. I've covered some of these in recent videos, including failing to count homeless people as unemployed, calling welfare spending economic growth, and undercounting inflation perhaps by a lot. Thing is, if these numbers are wrong, it could mean we're already in recession, masked by rising asset prices courtesy of the Fed. To give a flavor, the official inflation rate since COVID has been around about 21%. But fast food menu prices, which are a go-to indicator for foreign exchange investors, are up between 35 and 50%. People posting grocery receipts online actually say it's far higher than 50%. The problem is that if inflation was actually, say, 35 and not 21, it means GDP has not gone up at all since pre-COVID. In fact, it went down, implying that we have been in a recession for five years and counting. Meanwhile, if inflation was actually 50%, that would put us near depression levels with a 13% drop in real GDP since pre-COVID. The idea seems absurd. Certainly it does to Paul Krugman. But historically, inflationary recessions are hard to see for the simple reason that asset prices jump before consumer prices do. That's because stocks capitalize future inflation. So the affluent keep spending since their stocks went up, their houses went up. This all may sound familiar. In Germany's Weimar hyperinflation, for example, early on, people were not complaining about prices. They were popping champagne over how much money they were making in the stock market. The starvation came later. The four-year depression theory actually explains a lot of things. My colleague E.J. Antoni found that manufacturing orders have been flat for at least three years, while consumer spending has actually been negative for the past three years. We get data points like Americans seeing McDonald's as a luxury item or buying groceries on credit cards, selling off second cars, downsizing to smaller homes, which are all hallmarks of a recession. Even that granddaddy of statistics GDP may be an illusion because GDP counts government spending as productive, which of course it is not. So our current $2 trillion deficit is on paper automatically boosting GDP by nearly 7%. But that spending is not making us richer, it's making us poorer because it squanders physical resources. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained.com. When the official numbers are lies, we simply don't know what's happening out there. That leaves us with anecdotes, data points like record credit card debt, financial distress among the middle class, shrinking quality of life. My base case has been that we're repeating the 1970s disaster of out-of-control government spending and out-of-control Fed money printing. The official numbers are matching that almost to a T, but if, in fact, the real numbers are much worse because inflation is much higher, perhaps things might even be as bad as voters and consumer surveys report in which case we could be headed towards something we haven't seen in the century. Read the rest of the article with charts and all the gory details at profsetange.com. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.